Hey guys, Dilby here. Welcome back to the channel. Today I've got an awesome video for you. We're going to be looking at tracks by Dario Diatis. He's a big name in the house scene and has released music on labels like Defected, Tool Room, Stereo Productions, Hive Audio, and loads more. His tracks receive huge numbers of plays on Spotify and can often be found at the top of the Beatport charts. One thing about his tracks is they really sound like his. If you've watched the channel for a while, you've heard me talk about developing a signature sound, and Dario Diaz has a signature sound that is all his. His tracks sound unique and they're instantly recognizable. So I've put together a project in this style, and today we're going to dive in and take a look at what makes these tracks tick. Like always, there's a link in the description if you want to download the project files for this. That way you can dive in, see the presets, MIDI, samples that I've used, and how it all works together. And this can really help to give you a deeper understanding of the techniques I show in the video. All right then, let's make some house music. All right guys, so here we are inside Ableton and this is the project that I've put together in the style of Dario Diatis. So like I said in the start, Dario Diatis is an artist that has real signature sound, but he does do slightly different styles. Some of it's more kind of techy. He does stuff on like saved and stereo productions. Uh, and then some of it is more housey, like the stuff he does on Defected. I've done something that's a little bit more housey, basically just because of the vocal that I found. And I assumed that the Defected stuff is probably where most people know him from. All right, so let's have a listen through. There you go. All right, so let's just dive straight in and we'll start with the drums. So first up, we've got a kick. Oh, actually, I've got two kicks. First one is just from a sample pack. It was a loop and I've chopped it. Now, when I was referencing a bunch of Dario's tracks, what I noticed is his kicks are really low. A normal kick would sit with a fundamental frequency somewhere between A and F. And that's pretty standard across like a lot of genres from like house, deep house, tech house, melodic techno, um, melodic house, this type of thing. But Dario's kicks often sit with a fundamental of like D sharp or E, which is really low. And what this means is that a lot of the sub bass is coming from the kick. So I've got this kick that I pitched down by three semitones. And we're playing at E, which is actually the key of the track. The key of the track was dictated by the vocal that I found. Now you hear that that kick is not very punchy. It's really subby, but it's lacking a bit of bite in the top end. So what I've done here is actually just sampled a kick from one of Dario's tracks. And there's actually a tambourine on it. Which I don't want because I've actually used a tambourine in the track. So I've just EQ'd that out and made it a bit shorter. So we're just getting the snap from the kick. But together, this sounds really subby, really big, but it's also got that punch to cut through the mix. So next up, we've got some clap. So what I've done here is actually layered up two claps and a snare. So first up, we've got this clap. We see on the MIDI here that this is just dragged a little bit forward. So it's just happening a little bit before the two and four. Then we've got our second clap, which sounds like this. And that's straight on the grid. So together. 
So you get that little pre-clap kind of sound. And then we've got a snare. And that's giving some body and some roughness to the sound. I'm processing these together with some saturation, some EQ, uh, some reverb, and a little compression. So without the processing, So I'm cutting out a lot of the bottom end, but I'm also boosting up a little bit of the kind of fundamental sound. So it does cut through the mix a bit more, even though with this processing on, it sounds slightly weaker because of the EQ. So the clap together with the kick. I noticed when referencing that Dario's claps were kind of big sounding, but quite short. So that's what I've tried to go for here. So here I've got another snare, and this one is happening 1 16th before the first clap. So that gives some groove, and I, I noticed this in actually a few of his tracks, so it's kind of a common trope of his. So that gives this slightly jacking feel to the beat. Now let's move on to the hats. We've got quite a few hats here. So I've got this open hat which is like a bright kind of shakery one with not too much attack. I've got this open hat, which is much more of a classic open hat. Sounds almost a bit like a real drum kit. So together. Quite bright. Then I've got this double hat. Just adding some groove. So those hats are all sitting at slightly different frequencies, so they all kind of blend quite well together. So we're not building up too much energy in any one frequency. I've got this closed hat, which is a bit swingy, and just kind of playing some groove hits. So that just adds some kind of energy and some interest to the track. I've got that panning around a little bit, so each hit is like randomly panned by 13%, which gives it just a bit more of a kind of wider feel and gives the drums a bit more presence. I've got two tambourines. So first one is just happening like this. And second one. So you can hear they give quite a bit of pace to the track. And then finally I've got the shaker loop, which is very low in the mix and it's really just kind of like filling out a little bit of those offbeat sounds. Now in the percussion I've just got this little kind of bongo percussion fill. So this is just a percussion sound and it's got a bit of reverb and a bit of erosion on it. The erosion is just kind of making it a bit more gritty and bringing up the reverb a bit. The reverb's not too long, but the erosion helps it to kind of sit up higher in the mix. So I do have one more drum sound, but it's actually in the effects group. And the reason I put it here is because all the drums are being washed out in the break and I still want the fill to cut through. So next, let's take a look at the bass. So here's the MIDI for the bass. Pretty simple. Together with the kick. So you can hear in this track, the bass is kind of sitting above the kick and just really providing a groove. It's also not super loud in the mix. But really kind of rolling and groovy. The drums is where he gets a lot of the kind of characteristic sound from and the bass can be quite different it's normally pretty subby but I've heard different tracks with like an organ bass some with like a more plucky kind of sound so for this in this case I just went with something that worked with the groove with the rest of the elements so this is just a wavetable and I've got a sub I've got one oscillator which is playing a kind of saw square and then I've got another one which is playing a saw wave then we've got utility which is just monoing the subs I've got a saturator set to warm up lows, and then I'm EQing out 
just some of the kind of mid-range frequencies, compressing it a bit to control the dynamics. Got an LFO tool for sidechain. I've got this rack here, which is just cutting out some of the subs in the break. So let's have a little listen to what these different parts are doing. So I've got the sub there, and I've got a bit of tone there, which adds some distortion, allows it to cut through the mix. Next, we've got oscillator one. Quite nice and plucky, and then oscillator two. So that is pitched down five semitones, so it's playing the perfect fifth below oscillator one. And it's also quite a bit lower in volume. You can see the amp envelope gives it a bit of pluck, but also has some sustain because we've got some longer notes. It just means it's going to have a little bit of volume emphasis at the start of each note. Then I'm using envelope two to influence the filter. And then you can see this is really tight. So this is what is adding that kind of really plucky sound. Then the saturation. Just gives it a bit more body in the low mids. Then the EQ, just cutting off a little bit of the subs and cutting off some of the mids and emphasizing a little bit of the upper mids here, just to give it a bit more bite and cut through. Then compression. The compression just helps to like bring up the sustain of the notes a bit and also helps to maintain a consistent volume. So let's listen to that together with the kick. Nice groovy low end. So if I open up this Oscillos Megascope, we can actually get a visual representation. which will show us kind of here how actually low in the mix the bass is compared to the kick. But you can hear that it's actually, because there's so much sub coming from the kick, it's actually like working really well together and providing like a solid groove. So that's actually a really important point to understand and something that a lot of people overlook. They want their kick to be huge and their bass to be huge, but you kind of need to choose one or the other to be the main low end focus of the track. And this is what makes a like really groovy solid low end when they're working together, not competing with each other. Okay, now let's have a look at the melodic elements. The main melodic kind of theme is this organ stab. So this is just a sample that I've found, and it's something I noticed in quite a few of Dario's tracks, that he had a sound similar to this. It might be a synth, that might be an organ. As we're going for a more housey vibe, I went with an organ. If we listen with the kick and the bass, So that's working really well with the bass because in the MIDI, this note here is the same. So it's kind of reinforcing part of the bass line, just playing a bit higher. So that really helps with the groove of the track, right? Okay, next up we've got these high plucks and square pluck. So these are just kind of providing a bit of like rhythmic interest and there's a vocal chop which I'll show you later and they actually kind of play a similar pattern so that it's kind of creating this rhythmic theme throughout the track. So this is a preset from Wavetable that I've just tweaked to get the sound kind of right. And this is something that I do a lot when I'm producing, is I just look for a sound that's kind of in the ballpark of what I've got in my head, and then just tweak it until it kind of sounds about right. So this is the MIDI. We're playing B, which is the perfect fifth of E, the key of our track. And this is playing plus seven. So this chord device is adding a note seven semitones on top. So the F sharp, is in the scale of E minor, and it's the perfect fifth of the B, which is the perfect fifth of the E minor. So it creates kind of an interesting tonality to the sound, but it still fits harmonically in the track. And then this sound is just kind of sitting a bit higher above the other sounds in the track. I've got some overdrive to add a bit of grit. I'm cutting out all of the subs with an EQ. I've got some chorus, LFO tool, and an echo, which is giving a bit of atmosphere.
Next up I've got this square pluck. So here's the MIDI. It's just playing E and then G. And you can see it's happening over two bars, so it just kind of helps to turn around that phrase and keep things moving and rolling. So it does like a call and response thing and kind of rolls into the high plucks there. So I've purposefully added in those two elements to work together. This one, I did the sound design. It's coming from Wavetable. I've got some saturation, some chorus, and some EQ. So let's just turn off those and have a look at the sound design. So here we've got two oscillators. These are both playing square waves. The second oscillator is playing seven semitones up, the perfect fifth again. The first oscillator I've actually brought down the noise a bit, so it's emphasizing the perfect fifth. Then I've got a sub, which is playing down an octave, and that's a sine wave with some tone added. We've got a filter, which is pretty tight. It's got a bit of drive and resonance and then a really tight envelope on that filter. And I'm using quite a lot of that envelope so that it, the sound punches through, but it's really plucky and tight. Let's listen without the sub. So it's a bit thinner, right? And without the filter, so a bit too fizzy. Then the saturation helps it to be a bit more present. Chorus, spreading it out on the sides. I'm sending it to a bit of reverb, an eighth note ping pong, and a little bit of saturation. Now the final two elements in the melodic section are this phase pad. Now this is just a sample, which I'm playing in E. This is just rising up before the break, and then keeps rising to the end of the break, and just helps to kind of create some tension and then increase the tension throughout the break. In the break, I'm adding in a high string, another sample. which is playing a B, so the perfect fifth, which fits really well harmonically, but because it's not playing on the root note, it adds a little bit more tension. Now let's take a look at the vocals. So I've got the main vocal. It's just something I found on Loop Cloud. Not much to say about it. I'm really not doing much to it. It already had some effects and processing on it. So I just added a little bit more reverb and a little bit of dotted eighth ping pong. Ooh, 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 ooh. And the reason I chose this is because it sounded like something that might be on a defected track. More interesting is these vocal chops. So this is something that I noticed Dario Diatis does in a lot of tracks. So I'm just using the same vocal. Here I'm just chopping off the end of one of the words, and then I'm actually using the little altar boy from Sound Toys pulling down the formant, which makes it a little bit kind of deeper, it gives it a little slight pitch down effect, but it's staying in the same note. So without that... And that just helps to separate it a little bit from the main vocal. Got that going to some reverb and some dotted eighth note ping pong. Then I've got two more vocal chops. This MIDI is going like this, so it's playing the organ plays here, and then this plays here. So it's kind of like doing a bit of a call and response with the organ. So that's just playing from the main vocal, a bit that says so. I think this phrase here says feel so good. So I've got this playing So those two parts actually play together in the main vocal, but I've just slightly changed the timing, which helps them to feel a bit different. I'm also using the same bandpass filter trick to make them a bit thinner and feel a bit different from the main vocal, so that when the main vocal plays it really kind of jumps out. So these two elements are doing like a call and response with each other, and then this one is also doing a call and response with the organ stab, so it all starts to work together really well and kind of create this rolling groove. Now onto the effects, I've got a fill. So a really basic sound, there's literally thousands of these on Splice, so it's just like a real drum fill that's been sampled. And I'm just using the envelope here to tighten up those drum hits a little bit. Then I've got a crash. Which we can see from the waveform of the sample as being delayed on dotted eighth notes, which is what gives it its characteristic vibe. Next I've got a noise crash, which is like this. 
So you can hear that that one is being delayed on quarter notes and it sounds to me like it's got a bit of bit crushing or something on the sample. I've got a sweep which is just rising up in the break. And I've just used an LFO tool on that which gives it the pumping sound and helps it to create a bit more tension. Now as I mentioned at the start, these vocal chops are playing together with these high plucks. So the high plucks start, then the vocal chop comes in, reinforcing that rhythm, and it really helps to create a rhythmic theme for the track. Let's have a little look at the arrangement. This is very classic to the way that Dario arranges his tracks. We've got the strings and the pads starting a little bit before the break, then everything kind of carries over into the break. I've taken out one of the open hats, so it takes down the energy a little bit, but everything kind of stays the same. I've just cut out the low end of the kick using this filter rack, and the same thing on the bass. On the drums, I've got this easy washout from Bass Clef. I'm just automating that at the end of the break. So it gets all kind of chaotic and washy, and then right when it drops, it pulls all of that away and just drops in really crisp and punchy. So you can see how that drop has a lot of contrast with all the subs taken out and all the washiness. So when it drops back in, it creates this kind of switch, which gives like a really dynamic feel, creates a lot of impact, but without having to use like a lot of effects or anything like that. It's a super effective way to create really strong transitions in your tracks. I'm doing the same thing on the vocal chops. I've got them grouped and then I've got a, another washout, which is... And I've just let that decay on a little bit longer to create a bit of ambience which flows over. So that works here because the vocal chops are not playing. And having that ambience which flows over helps to kind of ease the transition, make it feel a bit more natural while still being really dynamic and hard. So then when we come out of this break, we've created a lot of tension. It comes back really punchy, dry with the beat. And then the main vocal is there. It really creates a strong moment and like a good payoff for the crowd, for the listener. Then after the main vocal, I've brought back in these two synths and added a ride, which just helps to pick up the energy a little bit further. And that's about that. Pretty simple, but super, super effective. And everything's done in quite a classy and understated way, so nothing feels like over the top. But everything's quite powerful, has its space, and the transitions and drops have a really strong impact. A lot of tension and release, and a really solid payoff. So tracks like this work really well on the dance floor, and also for the home listener. If you want to download this project, there's a link in the description. That way you can get in, have a look at the MIDI, have a look at the samples that I've used, the presets, all that kind of thing. Hopefully that can help to reinforce the things that I'm teaching here and give you like a deeper understanding of some of the techniques that I've used. All right, guys, there we go. Hopefully you enjoyed that and hopefully you learned something. This was a really fun one to do and I think it's a great lesson in simplicity. Dario's tracks are uncluttered and to the point. They have a really strong identity and absolutely work in the club. If you're a house producer and you're interested in more of this content, then check out this video I did on Frankie Rosado. All right, well that's it from me today. We'll catch you next time. Peace.